sparking hope and fear for so many Americans, Christian missionary and Ebola patient Dr. Kent Brantley back in the U.S. Here again, the shape, this arch with this 90 degree. I know this shot is a little blurry right here because it's just sort of a transition screen. And again, these are just, and understand, these are highly technical. Look at how detailed all of this is just for a fraction of a second of time, which means this is being targeted towards your subconscious mind on purpose because these folks that are making these things know that your conscious mind does not perceive these things at this frame rate. You cannot even pick up on it consciously which is the whole point. So I'll continue to go slowly forward and we'll notice certain shapes again. This interlocking pattern will be visible over and over and over again to you in different mnemonic circles, sequences on different channels on TV and different programs that you're being programmed with. And uh, so here we go. Here's another spinning mnemonic that comes right out of the center of that one. And everything spins in here. I'm gonna kind of just go through this now until we come to some more parts. And again, there's the count up. So as this thing starts off, it's a count up. So watch, it's it shows you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a count up, okay? And then the next process is a count down. And what they do. And all of this is well documented and if you research uh, mind control and hypnosis and hypnotic techniques it's well documented if you want to bring put somebody in a very very deep trance one way to do it is to bring them up and down in and out of hypnotic states A population that is completely, you know, glued to the television. Right. Yeah. Not realizing why they're having such a hard time getting up and walking away from it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's become just such the, the social norm to do that and so socially acceptable that, uh, and not just in our country too, of course, of course it's pervasive here in the United States, but this is a global uh, mind control effect that we're that we're going to discuss. And she talks about the dark forces, how they, they understand to some extent the science of imagery and that they've kept that information from the masses. The blowing up of the 9-11 uh, World Trade Towers again and again, watching the BP oil spill again and again, watching the birds covered in oil again and again and again and again. Right. Gets people to focus on these images and thereby create that reality. We don't have our own images anymore. We don't even have an image for our future Earth to be beautiful, except the images that the dark forces are presenting to us right now, and we are feeding them right. with right. our attention. So your average child, by the time it grows up and it's, and it's an 18-year-old adult, it has seen so much trauma, so much sex, and so much violence through the TV and mass media that that individual, even though they're not directly part of the Illuminati Satanic Network, in a way they are because they are also dissociated. And there's a difference between disassociated and dissociated. They have dissociated violence and sex into another aspect of their mind. And what that does is that turns humans into uh, violent creatures because Bonnie and I both believe adamantly that Human beings, if left to their own devices and not put through all of the satanic mind control, 
we are loving, caring beings by nature. We are not violent. And even all the wars that have ever taken place on this planet do not point to human beings being naturally violent. We are violent through mind control only. Come out of this. So there's, there's a lot of magic uh, going on, right? And, and, and uh, a lot of people are literally under w what, you know, what I'm trying to say is that, because this is very, it's very difficult to, to understand this properly. What I'm trying to say is that there are, a lot of what's happening today is in this realm. And it's very difficult for people to understand this. But when you study it, what you find is that, that the people that, a lot of the people involved in mass uh, control, are actually heavily involved in this science. And that, that's what you find out uh, when you do the research. Uh, many of the people that are involved in film, many of the people involved in music, many of the people that are uh, involved in uh, newscasting, they know how to manipulate uh, the minds of people. And whether it's done with this type of magic or simply with the power of technology, and the higher magic, the result is the same. You get people that are uh, as if they're possessed. And this is why um, it would be indistinguishable. You know, we've got kids that are stabbing children. We've got people that are just shooting people and not knowing why they're doing these things. And this is coming out of a culture that is really, really uh, profoundly disturbed in its essence because no civilization that was healthy would produce the type of games that they're exposing these young children to. No civilization that, that was healthy would produce the type of films where they have films where the, 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 the main character tortures people and chops off their fingers and their hands uh, or, or slowly tortures them to death. They, they, they wouldn't... Muslims would have never come up with these type of uh, ideas because the, their, their culture is not a, it's, it's not a demonic, dark culture. It's become demonic and dark because uh, of a lot of madness that's happened in the Muslim world. I mean, there's a lot of demonic, dark things going on. And these people are really, uh, Dostoevsky called his book about the terrorists, The, the Possessed. And in one, um, in one translation, it's called the demons. I don't know the Russian word for it. But he certainly understood that there was something demonic involved in this. So that's, you know, this is difficult for people to deal with this stuff. But when you actually find out about the characters that were involved in producing a lot of this technology, and, and, and you read the history of it, you find that they were really involved in a lot of these things, which is very strange. And when you see the result that these things have on people, and the effect uh, that they have on them. So, I mean, I don't know, that Arthur C. Clarke, who said that uh, advanced technology becomes indistinguishable from magic, was involved in magic, he was involved in numerology. Um, it's very strange that they place these satellites at 22,000 feet, because those are their numbers, 11, 22, 33. They like multiples of 11, and things like this. So, I don't know, I mean, we're all trying to work this thing out, aren't we? But uh, these things are real, and jadu, whatever you want to call it, it's real. Uh, and, and, and that's why we, and I'll tell you something just uh, personally. For me, I didn't really give a lot of this credence, because I wasn't raised like this. I was raised, I mean, my father was a college professor. Um, I, I certainly wasn't raised with the idea, like magic was something, you know, I thought magic was pulling rabbits out of hats and things like that. When, when I became Muslim and I heard all these things and you know, I didn't really, whatever, you know, it wasn't really something. But in the last few years, it's become much clearer to me how much this is actually a force working in the world. And, and it makes much more sense to me now why there are so many hadiths and so many protective du'as against this stuff. You know, this is evil. And also, 
You know, the, these, the, the influences of the demons. The Prophet said, or that they should become present. You know, so the demonic realm is real. And there are people, unfortunately, that are actively involved in attempting to bring that realm into this realm. And this is where it gets very strange. Rasulullah, la ilaha illa Allah, Muhammadun Rasulullah.